Now, wherever you are listening in the world right now, you will know that the radio is a powerful medium. And we're going to take a look at how mass radio campaigns could be one of the most effective and cost-effective ways of improving child health in developing countries. New research out today suggests that mass radio campaigns in low-income countries, encouraging early treatment for some of the most deadly illnesses for children under five, could potentially save thousands of lives. Development Media International, which is uh, co, uh, co-led the study with the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, has run such a campaign. And the story of Marietta in Burkina Faso, as told by her father, illustrates how such a campaign can help. Take a listen. My name is Tabandaba Lankoande, and my daughter is called Marietta. Three years ago, my wife let Marietta sleep outside while she went to work in the fields. When she came back, Marietta had a high fever. We thought she had fallen under a curse. People here believe that can happen if a bird flies over a child while they sleep outside. I consulted traditional healers and spent most of my money on traditional remedies and medicine bought at the market. But nothing worked, and on the sixth day she fell into a coma. That night a neighbour came to visit and he was listening to his portable radio. That's when I heard a message on the radio explaining how to recognise the symptoms of malaria in children and saying that parents should take them immediately to the health centre. Well, let's talk now to Roy Head. Delighted to say he joins us in the studio, CEO of Development Media International, one of the groups behind uh, this groundbreaking research. Welcome to Newsday. Thank you. That's a great example, isn't it, of how kind of ancient superstition and modern scientific medical information, two worlds colliding there. So tell us what you did in your campaign. It's a lovely example. And I think we all have a sense that mass media is powerful. We know it reaches millions of people at a time. And yet it's never been proven that mass media can actually change behaviours, not by the advertising world, not by anybody in the academic world, not in the public health world. And public health world is dominated by, by science, by epidemiologists, by health economists who work out what's really worth spending money on. If we're going to spend money on media, that's at the expense of doctors, nurses, drugs, these sort of things. So the responsibility is really on us to prove that it actually works. So there's, there, there had never been a randomised control trial to actually show that mass media worked. We did one. It, was, it had been attempted four times in the United States and it didn't work. And so we did one in Burkina Faso and we broadcast on seven radio stations. We had seven as controls. And now we have the results. The results are that the number of parents taking their children for malaria treatment, like in Marietta's story, went up by 56% in the first year. The number of people taking their children for pneumonia treatment went up by 39%. And the number of people treating their kids for, for diarrhoea went up by 76%. So... This, if you, if you plug all this into a mathematical model, you can actually tell how many lives were saved. And over the course of that campaign, over 3,000 lives were saved, which is about 9.7% reduction in child mortality. Incredible figures. How often was the message going out and, and where exactly was it going out? Well, it was going out on the radio stations. It was going out 10 times a day, 365 days a year for three years. I mean, behaviour change is hard. It's not easy. You have to do that level of saturation to really make an impact. And on top of that, we were broadcasting two hours a night, these interactive programmes. Yeah. And there's so many different languages and dialects as well. So clearly... They were going out in all these different, t- 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 specifically to local communities. Yeah, we were broadcast. The, it's a the, the lingua franca in Burkina Faso is French, but we we weren't broadcasting in French at all. We were just broadcasting in the local languages like Gourmanche, uh, Jula, uh, the, the the languages that people really have as their first languages and really take notice of. Yeah. So that this medical treatment, the access to this healthcare is there, but people just didn't know about it. Yeah, and. It, it's a human right to know how to treat your child. I mean, we take diarrhoea, for example. If a child's got diarrhoea and, it's, and, and, and every time you give it food and water and it comes out the other end, you think, well, perfectly plausibly, you think, I might be causing my child's diarrhoea. So you stop giving it food and water and that's how the child dies. And that's, that's a human right. Parents really care about their children's lives, you know, but not just having that knowledge um, is a human right. Our, our purpose was to, to go even further than that, saying it's not just important, it's not just a human right, it's actually a really cost-effective way of saving lives. And the calculations that we published in our second paper today show that this is actually one of the cheapest ways, one of the most cost-effective ways of saving children's lives. So information was passed on, but all of this was there. I mean, you say it's cost-effective because it saves lives, but Mm. clearly the more people who are coming forward and demanding the treatment, was it always there when they needed it? 
Yeah, more or less, more or less. And, and there, there are obviously occasional drug shortages and occasional staff shortages, but in, in you know, almost 90% of cases, people were getting the right treatment. Where do we go next with this then? Because clearly you have now scientifically proven that communication can help save lives if you do it in the right way. What's next? Well, we're in the middle of a trial right now to see whether we can improve family planning behaviours. The, the Sahel region of West Africa is one of these areas where um, population is really rising. It's quadrupled since 1950. It's going to quadruple again before the end of the century. And so there, there is a, it's one of the few places in the world that was a genuine population crisis. So we're, we're doing the same again, really, but with a harder behaviour change because family planning is actually, you know, it's, it's very intimate. It's, it's, it's how many children you have and your sexual behaviours are, are very personal. So this is a, a, a level further on, I think. And can you see it rolled out I- I- in other continents across the world, in other situations? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it's really difficult to do a randomised control trial. That's why it's not been done until now. But uh, just broadcasting national campaigns, scaling this up, is actually really easy. I mean, we're doing that now in Mozambique, and we intend to do it, to, to it elsewhere. And, it, and, and the predictions are that we could save tens of thousands of lives doing that. What does it feel like to be involved in something like that when you can see a concrete change? You know, that, that young girl we heard about at the start of this being left outside and all that kind of superstition surrounding what was wrong with her when she's actually been, you know, she's been bitten and she's got malaria. And it's very, very simple. You know, you're saving those kind of lives through this campaign. It's funny because, you know, I deal with statistics all the time and you, you measure impact by looking at these, these, these quite complex statistics. And yet it, I was just listening to Marietta's story that was going out and it was actually quite touching. You know, I, I find that quite moving and because it is that very individual, very human story multiplied up you know, thousands of times. Thousands and thousands. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing it with us. Roy Head, CEO of Development Media International. Ten minutes.